Hello, and we are live. A little bit early, got a few minutes before I set on, so not going to do too much. I'm just getting uh, getting all the feathers prepped and out and ready. So once once we hit the hour, um, I'll start actually uh, jabbering at you, but we are on the air. No, oh, not those feathers. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to today's stream. Uh, today we're going to be finishing up the Graham, D no, Douglas Graham. Um, it's got two first names. What can I say? Um, or two last names, depending on how you look at it. Um, we're going to be working on the Douglas Graham. Uh, we're going to be doing the wing and uh, all the uh, finishing touches whoops um <clears throat> just before we get started uh if you um enjoy what you see on the stream hit subscribe get notified when next time i go live uh like i said uh, i think last week um i will sometimes stream on fridays but my preference is to stream on saturdays uh, it'll probably be Saturday at 11, uh, just because um, of scheduling and, and time. Uh, probably stream for an hour. Uh, I kind of like doing these two-part flies where, you know, you do the body one week and the wing the next. So I think that's the, the format we'll keep for now. Um, yeah. Uh, if you uh, enjoy my work or if you want to see more of my work you can check it out on instagram at just wondering dot brad and uh if you want to <clears throat> purchase any of my flies or support the channel uh you can check out my etsy shop studio one two one three on etsy um i also think just searching just wondering flies on etsy will also bring you to my etsy shop i think um i'll have to check that out let you know uh, but anyway, uh, getting on to the fly, today's fly, the Douglas Graham. Uh, this is from Hardy. Um, and uh, last week we did the body, uh, started uh, the tip and the tag, uh, or we did the underbody and then tip, tag, tail, but the body segments and the uh, all the way up to the throat hackle um and today we're going to do the wing <clears throat> excuse me the underwing and wing and uh so it's just to recap i did all of the body work using white thread and today um for the wing i'm going to switch to black thread uh and that just um it ensures that when i go to put the head cement on i've already got a black layer uh, and that, that helps because one of the things I don't like to do with head cement is go all the way to the wing or all the way to the throat. Uh, that just helps prevent me from getting head cement into those fibers. So by using black thread, I can leave a little bit of gap and nobody will know. Um, and then when I use, uh, put a layer of clear head cement over, it just blends right in. So that is what we're going to do. All right. So I am going to need to build up a little bit of bulk here in front of the 
throat. Um, and the reason for that is because the throat, you know, the throat has a, a, a certain amount of thickness. It's got fibers and um, a stem, a rachis, as they call it in feather terminology. Um, and in order for the underwing to lay close to the body as possible, um, you got to overcome just that little bit of hump right there. Uh, <clears throat> And that's okay because, um, as I've said before, having a little bit of bulk to your head area, it's not always a terrible thing. All right, so just right where we're going to tie in the underwing, um, just a little bit of added bulk. Now, the underwing is tied in in strips. And it is golden pheasant tippet and calls for dark turkey. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think this is from a Narganset. It's a little bit, it's not quite as dark as I think I would like it to be for a pattern that calls for dark turkey. Um, but this is the darkest turkey that I have, so this is what we're gonna use. And, um, and usually it's tied in in strips. Now, normally if I were gonna tie in an underwing using golden pheasant tippets, I'd take two tippets and tie them back to back uh, down the body or over the body. Um, but it specifically calls for them in strips. So that means I'm gonna take, uh, I think this neck, or this um, yeah, this neck will has feathers big enough that I can tie, use a bilateral feather and just take two strips, one from either side, um, and I'm going to tie them back to back, but in strips, um, not whole feathers. Uh, and I think the way I'm going to do this is actually to mix the golden pheasant with the turkey, uh, just because I like the way that looks. Uh, it doesn't call for mixed for the underwing to be mixed but um i like that appearance i've done it before on other other patterns and that's a that's a good combination so we'll do that so Yeah, the wing on this fly is different for a number of reasons. Um, the underwing is just one of them. But you will get to see that in just a little bit. Uh, trash can. <clears throat> Um, I like to try tie with a trash can between my feet because then I can just drop feather dust down between my feet. Um, I don't need a particularly thick underwing, particularly because this calls, or a particularly, so here's my bilateral feather. It's more or less bilateral. And I don't need particularly stri thick strips from this just because uh, it does, call, this is a two part underwing. It's got both dark turkey and golden pheasant tippet. Um, and unlike, say a white tip turkey wing, underwing or um, like a, a, a tippet underwing where the tippets are back to back, because I'm mixing this, um, it's gonna end up more like, um, you kind of get the hint of tippet and dark turkey underneath the wing and not so much a, a slab of, of dark turkey or tippet, so. It's um, 
doesn't have to be quite as precise or as present. Of course, I drop it. Okay, so I have my two pieces of tippet. Um, and because I'm mixing them, I'm going to do a mixing technique of, of just where I stack them, and then I'll mix them on the fly. Uh, so I'll show you what that looks like once I have all the bits. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I have my dark turkey slip and I'm going to take the uh, corresponding tippet, slip a tippet. And I'm going to take them and I'm going to, instead of, so normally if I were to marry them together, I'd marry them like this. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tippet and I'm going to lay it on top of, or in this case, um, yeah, on top of the turkey. Um, Literally like that. So you can see how the tippet and the, the turkey are just on top of it, or the tippet is on top of the turkey. Um, I'm going to lay that out on my bench, and I'm going to do that for the other side. So I have the other side, and then I'm going to put the two bundles back to back. I'm just going to even out the tips of the turkey and golden pheasant on either side. So basically you end up with back-to-back -back turkey sandwich between golden pheasant tippet um, strips. I'm going to just soft loop that in. Again, because I'm mixing this or because it's going to be end up mixed, it doesn't have to be terribly precise. those in. All right. Um, and I will say that usually if the pattern wants something mixed, particularly in like the earlier literature, they might say, um, you know, strips of golden pheasant broken or sprigs or in sprigs. Um, <clears throat> This pattern doesn't call for it, but I like the way it looks. So that's what we're doing. Trim it. And wind 
a little bit and trim some more. You actually want to trim your underwing just a little bit long relative to say how you would trim your main wing. Um, and that's because the, the tie-in point for the underwing provides a foundation for the way you tie in your main wing. So. Just gonna wax my thread as normal, tie down the butt ends of the underwing. All right. Now, in order to mix this wing, I'm going to break it up using my bodkin. Then I'm just going to distribute everything just a little bit with my fingers. Looks a mess. Going to kind of remarry everything together and then kind of preen it so that it'll lay flat down along the top of the body. Um, and you can break up you can break up a wing using your fingers or just pulling it apart. Um, Anyway. All right. Looks good. You know, and um, a mixed underwing like this generally doesn't look good on its own because, you know, it's so few components. But once you start putting the, um, the main wing over it, it looks better and better and better. So... All right, let's just clean up just a little bit. All right, so this main wing is also interesting in that it calls for cinnamon swan. And this is the first pattern that I've come across that has called for cinnamon swan. I've definitely heard of cinnamon turkey being called for. Um, I am going to use cinnamon turkey because that's what I've got. Uh, I have very little swan in my uh, feather collection right now. So I'm going to use a little bit of the cinnamon turkey. Um, and then it's red and yellow swan, again, using turkey. And uh, bustard and uh, golden pheasant tail. So a fairly simple wing, uh, just in general. Uh, not a whole lot of colors or components, but uh, we can, I think we can make this an, an attractive wing. All right. Um, now it calls for bustard, and my interpretation of Hardy in particular is that when if he calls for bustard, it's usually referencing speckled bustard. Um, I know some of the other authors will call for speckled bustard, like specifically for speckled bustard, but I'm pretty sure Hardy just calls, if he wants um, something other than speckled bustard, he actually calls for it by name. As I recall, I could be wrong. Um, so I am actually I'm I'm going to use Cory Bustard or Speckled Bustard uh, for the Buster, um, uh, as opposed to you know um, Florican. Uh, I also think that it'll provide some nice contrast, uh, particularly to the uh, Golden Pheasant Tail. Um, so yeah. Actually, I want to mix this wing up just a little bit. Didn't mix quite as nicely as I'd hoped. Yeah. I 
golden pheasant tippets don't marry into things into wings very well um sometimes they do but not generally the the tips with the black bars so a little bit unruly all right See, how do I want to organize this wing? My spittle blustered. <clears throat> okay. So I, one of the common techniques for a, a wing or from a married wing is to, oh, I don't need this feather. Um, uh, you build a simple straightforward wing and then you break it down and you turn it into, you know, whatever mix you want. <clears throat> Let's see, so we have one, two, three, five components. Uh, let's see, so five. Okay. It's body bailings. All right, how are we going to do this? How are we going to mix it? All right, so I think I'm going to do four of each. I'll have to see. So I'm going to do one side of the fly and then mix that up, see how I like it, and go from there. All right, so I have all the different colored strips for the one wing. Um, I always, uh, perhaps out of habit by now, but um, put the golden pheasant as a chunk on, on the top of the wing. Um, and I, I'm not going to deviate from that today, but... Let's see, how do I want to mix this? What's a good color? Red, cinnamon, yellow? So we could go red, cinnamon, yellow. We could go red, yellow cinnamon like that or we could go yellow red cinnamon I feel like the, the the conventional thing would be to go 
yellow, red, cinnamon. Um, <clears throat> uh, except we're going to mix this up pretty well. So I'm going to go, yeah, so I, I, yeah, we'll go, we'll go yellow, red, cinnamon, but we're going to go, we're going to do this, um, in strips of two. So I have four fibers of each and I'm going to marry, go two, 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 and then two, 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 two. Um, and I may skip the top layer of speckled mustard because that'll abut, that'll be right next to the golden pheasant. And that may not look good. We'll see. So I'm just going to marry. So a, a trick for handling, you know, if you're having trouble marrying together, you know, thinner strips of, so let's say, you know, you want to put two strips of red next to two strips of yellow. Um, if you're having trouble handling just the two fibers, or sorry, if you want to put two fibers of red next to two fibers of yellow, um, but you're having trouble handling just the two fibers, uh, a trick is to cut out four, marry, you know, four yellow next to four red, and then you can take away two red and take away two yellow. Um, that is a handy trick uh, if you're dealing with smaller numbers of fibers for something. Um, nuts. Uh, I just dropped something. Try not to waste. All right. And so I here, uh, as I was saying, uh, I, I um, married two strips of, or four fibers of yellow next to four fibers of red. And then I just took away two fibers of the red. Um, and so now I'm left with two fibers of red married to two four fibers of yellow. And that gives me kind of a larger chunk to hang on to when I marry, you know, other things to it. So again, I'm going to marry four fibers of cinnamon onto the whole contraption. Then take away two. Same thing with the speckled bustard. Just want to make sure the speckled bustard's long enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, married. Four on, take two away. I could probably even make do with one, but so that looks pretty good. And now I need two fibers of yellow, so I'm going to take the two fibers off the bottom. Um, I consider myself dexterous enough to be okay handling just two fibers at a time. It, it gets tricky for me when I get down to like a single fiber, but I so very rarely ever do just single fibers. So
And if you're having trouble, uh, so I found with particularly with Turkey, because Turkey is so good at marrying to itself and other things. Um, if you're having just a little bit of trouble with getting the, the barbs on the fibers to interlock, uh, you can just kind of wiggle the fly, the wing up and down like this, and it just kind of basically rubs the, the, the fibers together until they, the barbs interlock um, like Velcro. All right, so there is the first part of the wing. Um, and now I need golden pheasant, and I think. If I can, I want to make this M gold tail work, but I think I'm running out of length. I'm running out of the long fibers I need for the size wing. Oh, yeah, I could probably do it. I just need four. All right, so that is an attractive wing, I think. Um, although, I'm not 100% certain I like having the speckled butter buster next to the golden pheasant tail, uh, like I mentioned. Um, but it should tie in long enough, I think. Yeah, the golden pheasant will tie in long enough, just barely. Uh, this and gold tail is really, really nice, but I am starting to run out of the longer fibers that I need for, you know, even three out flies. So uh, you have to switch over to regular golden pheasant, um, which is not quite as nice to tie with. So, all right. <clears throat> so um, that's one wing. This is the, so this is the near side wing or the wing that will be closest to me. And so we'll uh, marry up the other side.
So again, I'm going to marry the full chunk. So four fibers are red next to four fibers are yellow. And then I'm going to take two away. Cinnamon turkey. Speckled mustard. Okay. So that's that. And then I need two yellow fibers from the bottom. Got the window open today because it's such a nice day out. Um, but you can hear the traffic. I hope you. I hope. I hope you guys can't. Or it's not distracting for you guys. But yeah, if you hear some traffic, it's because the window's open. The office in which I tie is kind of small, and uh, if the window's not open, don't get a whole lot of. If the window or door isn't open, I should say. You don't get a whole lot of circulation. And uh, when I'm streaming, gotta have the door closed because household's noisy. And uh, as I said before, the secret to fast or to doing married wings fast or easy, I guess, maybe not fast, but um, with the minimum amount of hassle uh, is to have clean materials and clean hands. Um, if your hands are oily or, you know, a little bit dirty, um, you'll mat down the, the barbs on the fibers and they won't marry together as easily. Um, so you want to have clean hands and if your materials are clean uh, they'll marry much easier as well um, and if you have materials that are being a little uh, difficult um, one solution is to steam them uh, or you can try steaming them um, or you can wash them and then steam them
I'm going to say that this golden pheasant isn't going to be long enough. Going to be a little bit disappointed about that. Oh, just barely. Can I make it work? Yeah, just barely. I'll try it. Um, I might have to take the wing off and replace this am gold with um, some longer golden pheasant that I have. We'll see. All right, so I have my two wings. I'm just going to correct this one so that its tip shape matches the other. Oops. And I'm going to put them back to back. And place it on top. Uh, there are a lot of ways for setting wings. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, saliva. You could use water, but saliva is handy. And I'm just going to dampen the the area of the wing where I'm going to tie it in, um, particularly the am gold, since that'll be the stiffest bit. Um, I'm going to soft loop and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the butts up and I'm going to push down a little bit and that'll help compress the wing and I'm just going to tighten the thread, repeat, compression, take another loop, compress, oop. Tighten the hook in the vise. Yeah, and there we go. It's a fairly well set wing. How'd I do on the far side? Terrible. Oof. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's not a terrible set. It's just a little bit rolled. Fix that just a little bit. I think. Okay. And it's not so much that the wing is rolled, it's just that it's not flat. So it's like cupped a little bit. Um, which means the wing can't sit straight on the hook. Yeah. The nice thing about that is I can take it off. I can just soft loop it again.
Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Oop. Um, I think I said this before. Bears worth repeating. Um, most fly tires have a good side and a bad side. Um, usually the good side, uh, the way that turns out perfectly is usually the side that is closest to the fly tire, just because that's the side they can see. And um, even people using rotary vices still have this problem. So, you know, um, happens. And, that's, and that has to do, it's less, I guess it's less about what you can see and the direction in which you're wrapping the thread. So if I'm wrapping the thread around this way, um, the wing closest to me is being pushed towards you and the wing furthest away from me is, uh, is being wrapped around the hook that way. And so it's going to fold differently, uh, particularly when you're dealing with wings that are, you know, 20, 20 odd fibers, you know, these thick, the thick wings that you see on salmon flies usually, um, you know, have a tendency to do this more. And if I'm honest, I don't, since these are mostly destined to be in a in a frame and not fished, I'm less concerned about it than I would be if I were, say, tying a fishing fly. Um, and it's also one of the reasons why a lot of fishing flies are mixed wing and not built wing like this. So this is a built wing style. And a lot of fishing flies, uh, particularly in ye olde days, were um, mixed uh because then you didn't have to worry about so much having a crooked wing um shoot i don't know where my bolo x went um ah here so Anyway, uh, so that wing went in pretty well. Um, you can see the underwing underneath. Yeah. These uh, body veilings are just a little bit crooked, or not crooked, but twisted. Uh, I should say the feathers that make up the body veilings are a little bit twisted and um, if you'll recall, recall from last time, I used a little bit of saliva to slick them down so that they could be tied on easier. Well, that straightened them out, but when they dried, um, they tried, they dried, um, a little bit twisted. And so they're propellering just a little bit around the body, but can't help that. Uh, so one thing about body veilings is can be a little bit annoying in that way. All right. So that's a secure, secure wing. Just got to make sure that it's flows well. Yeah, that looks good. Oops. Keep playing with it and messing it up. I'll probably just stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Next, sides. Uh, so this has summer duck sides, uh, jungle cock eyes, and a topping and horns. Uh, let's see. So I need summer duck, and I think I put that away. Mm. 
this. There we go. So, summer duck, and then our summer duck usually refers to barred wood duck. And then I am going to use some eyes, some jungle clock eyes, and I think I have. Actually, I'm going to pick some new ones. Those are a little bit wonky. Um, So one of the annoying things I found out about this jungle cock neck that I've had for uh, 10, 10 years now um, is that it wasn't quite symmetrically cut. Uh, and so whenever I think I'm pulling feathers from the same, from like exactly opposite sides of the neck, um, they are not actually exactly opposites. So yeah, over... Just got to make sure that they have similar curvatures. So, um, and of course, I'm going to do the trick where I reverse the threads um, when tying in the duck. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie in the duck and the jungle cock on a side, and then reverse the thread and tie in the jungle cock and, or the the duck and the jungle cock on the other side. Um, and that'll as always, uh, help uh, compress the duck equally. That's not a very good pair of summer duck. Um, the duck equally, it also helps set the jungle cock eyes equally. Again, it's to avoid that um, the, the uneven or uh, differential thread compression uh, induced by wrapping the thread in a certain direction. Uh, I might have to break into a fresh pair of summer duck. Should not be a terrible thing. These are so beautiful. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Summer duck and jungle hawk for each side. Just going to even out. Thicknesses of the jungle cock and also the angle at which their bars lay. And I'm going to tie this one in. Um, and because the duck is going on first and goes behind the jungle cock, I'm going to tie it along so that, so if I'm using the other side, let's see, this time, right, so that the bar, I think I can see that. So that the second bar actually is what? No. Nah, that's too long. Let's just go to the first bar. The first bar is, is even with the butt. So, move that along. Put the bar even. 
one. Oop. Now the thread, adjust it underneath. Okay. Good. Then the corresponding jungle cockeye. Uh, I'm just going to pull some of the really kind of fluffy fluff. And again, I don't tend to trim so much of the jungle clock fluff off. I just peel it off a little bit, but then I want to tie in a, a decent portion of that, of the extra fluff because that keeps it from rotating. I'm going to tie in the jungle clock so it just overlaps the second bar of this summer duck. All right, going to, so single, turn a thread there, and then I'm going to take As always, wax my thread. Oop. Don't get the throat caught in the wax thread. That's bad. Take one extra turn. Trim. Okay, then I'm going to slip the thread under. So between the, the point of the blind eye and the silk gut, and that's how I'm going to anchor the thread so that I can oop, reverse it. Jungle cockeye got a little cockeyed. And I'm going to reverse the thread. <clears throat> and tie. Okay. No. Yep. One of the nice things about live streaming is I can see what's going on in the in the viewfinder. So that looks pretty good. Okay, again, gonna wax my thread. Take a couple extra tur turns to secure it. That was equal. Trim. I'm going to reverse my thread again, again by slipping this thread between the blind eye and the, the gut eye. So now I'm back to my normal wrapping direction. Okay, I'm just going to preen this a little bit.
Excellent. Next, uh, the only other thing that this has is a roof, or uh, not a roof, but a, um, a crest. The roof is something different. So, a crest. Um, let's see. The way I prefer my crests um, is just to measure it out. Uh, I strip off the extra fibers. And I measure it just a tad bit long because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it in and then I'm going to give it a slight pull and that helps it settle against the, the wing a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to flatten the stem at the tie-in point. and give it just a slight kink. Mm, not quite what I want. Still a little bit long. Um, and I will say that this is a, from a batch of crests that I did straighten um, just because I'm running out of naturally straight crests off of this particular um, golden pheasant head. But uh, normally I don't like to straighten crests because if you straighten your crests, um, they're more susceptible to returning to their warp state if you end up in like a humid place or you know if you have a week of high humidity um it doesn't matter so much if they're like you know behind glass in a frame uh just because the gr glass will keep them straightened but um they can uh return to their warped state uh in in humidity so I much prefer a naturally straight crest, uh, given the chance or given the option. It's looking pretty good. And the swing's just being a little bit fiddly. There I go. Got to straighten that wing out. <laughs> anyway, um, and then blue macaw horns. I'm going to tie the far one on first because it's easier for me, at least, to match the far one with the near one than it is to match the far one with, or the, the near one with the far one than it is for me to match the far one with the near one. Okay.
Okay, excellent. From that. I'm going to heavily wax my thread now. Because I want to bind down all of those extra little bits of feather sticking out and smooth down the head so that when I lay down the head cement, it goes on nice and even. Great. Now I'm going to whip finish it and call it a day. So yeah, this turned out really nice. All right, so there we have it. Um, finished Douglas Graham. I almost called it Graham Douglas again. Uh, Douglas Graham. Um, yeah, um, this is a neat fly. It's kind of got elements that are familiar. Uh, the two jointed, the, the body with the two joints and the body veilings. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a, got a unique uh wing with the cinnamon swan and the uh the, the dark turkey and tippet under wing so i'm going to give this a code head cement and um post a picture of it on on my instagram probably later or tomorrow or maybe monday uh, when the head cement's dried and uh yeah eventually <laughs> eventually it'll make it into my etsy shop um, I'm, I'm behind on posting flies to the Etsy shop, uh, but those will eventually make it. Um, speaking of the Etsy shop, if you want to support the channel, like I said, uh, Etsy shop is studio one, two, one, three. And, uh, if you want to see more of my work, check me out on Instagram uh just wondering um it's at just wondering dot brad b r a d and uh thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me today and i'll see you next time